Today, I'm going to tell you about 10 often overlooked places to retire. Everyone knows about retirement in Florida and Sun City, Arizona. Those are always in the conversations about the best places to retire. Most of the time, those places come into play because of weather. A majority of retirees have weather as their number one requirement for spending their golden years. If weather isn't all that important to you, there are some really good options that are often overlooked. This video isn't just about the weather and retirement. It is about great places to retire that aren't aren't the normal places people look to when they're thinking about retirement. We'll also be looking at the health care in these cities, the cost of living, and life expectancy. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Lynchburg, Virginia. Lynchburg, Virginia is a charming little city right between Richmond and Roanoke. Actually, it's not too far away from Farmville. Remember that game from Facebook years back? There's a real place called Farmville. But Lynchburg is right in the middle of the state and it is home to a couple decent universities, Liberty University and the University of Lynchburg. It also has the James River flowing right by the northeast side of town. They got a couple really cool lakes in the area. One that I've been to is Smith Mountain lake now this was years ago we had a good time there it was a lot of fun of course we were drinking and there was a whole bunch of college girls there so it was a good time and i was about that age too as in the military i don't hear no crap about hey briggs what are you doing hanging out with the college girls you're like 50 this was years and years ago Anyway, Lynchburg is a great city. Very historic, beautiful. I love the way it kind of has, there's trees everywhere. It's very forested. And as soon as you get outside of one of the neighborhoods, you're pretty much in the woods. You're not going to run into a whole bunch of traffic and there's plenty of stuff to do here in retirement. It's not expensive either. Here's the stats. The cost of living in Lynchburg is 12% lower than the national average and healthcare costs are 2% lower than the national average. That's pretty good. On top of that, the life expectancy in Virginia is 77.6 years. The lowest life expectancy is Mississippi with 71 years and the highest is Hawaii with 80.7 years. So Virginia is doing pretty good with 77 years. The only negative to this one is uh, it gets some pretty rough winters. So just keep that in mind. And they got a little crime. It's only 3% higher than the national average. And yes, it's horrible when it's above the national average. 3% is not much. Like I've said many times before, you got places like Detroit and St. Louis where it's three and 400% above the national average. Number nine, Prescott, Arizona. North of Phoenix in the hills, you have Prescott. And if you're not familiar with this place, it looks like it should be called Prescott, but it's not. And if you call it Prescott while you're in Prescott, they're going to climb all up your butt and not in a good way. It's like how the locals know when someone's not from the area by the way you pronounce the town. This is a place that's big with retired cops. I kid you not. Prescott has been growing since the 1930s. The last time they had a census that was in the negative was 1920s. And since then, they've only had two decades where they only gained single digit percentage points. That was in 1940 and 1970. Every other year, it's like 20, 15, 45, 33%. In 1960, they had 90% growth. They've got a lot of new construction, I'd say within the last decade. And it's still growing. And most of it is retiree. So one of the negatives here, if you're a retiree that's going to want a job in retirement, you know, something to do, uh, there are not many of them. Spend your time hiking, golfing, and I don't know, trying to grow stuff in the desert. The winters here don't get terribly cold. It does get cold in the desert, but we're not talking Minnesota cold, you know? What you got to worry about here is the rain. They get some serious flooding, flash floods, all that good stuff. It'll scare you. But this is not a bad place to live, especially if you're someone that wants some heat. You're away from all that Sun City and Phoenix and Tucson. You're up here in the hills. It's a little less of a city lifestyle. Now, here's what's weird. Arizona overall has a lower than average healthcare cost. In Prescott, it's a little bit higher than Arizona's average, but it's still 6% lower than the national average. The life expectancy in Prescott is 76.3 years. Wear some sunblock if you're there. Number eight, Traverse City, Michigan. This is another one. I like to call it Traverse. I've also called it Traverse. The reason for that gets people to leave comments. Not saying I've never made a mistake, but come on, it's Michigan. Those people love to get their dander up over the stupidest crap. Traverse City is a great city, especially during the summer. It's Michigan. The winters are going to be rough, but this is a beautiful lake town. 
They only have a population of about 16,000 residents with about 153,000 in the entire metro area. So it's good size, but it's still not terribly crowded. It sits on the southern shore of both arms of the Traverse Bay, which is connected to Lake Michigan. And I mean, if those lakes don't float your boat, they got plenty of other ones in the area. Now, this city is often overlooked because of its winters. And during the summers, it does get a little crowded with tourists and stuff like that. But it's a really, really nice city. If you live here and you need medical care, Munson Medical Center is the flagship hospital for the region. This is a good sized facility with everything you're gonna need. And it gets good grades in just about everything. The cost of living in Trevor City is 3% lower than the national average. Their healthcare costs are 5% lower. And life expectancy here is 76.5 seven years. It's much lower if you move there and continue calling it Travera City. Number seven, Athens, Ohio. Settle down, settle down. There are nice places in Ohio to move to. Most of you have never heard of Athens, Ohio. I had never heard of it until probably three years ago, a subscriber asked me if I would find out some information on the city because they were thinking about moving there. Athens is nestled in the Appalachian foothills. It's got a nice little downtown too. Oddly enough, they don't have as many open storefronts, meaning vacant shops, as a lot of other Ohio towns do. This is also where you will find the Hawking River, which wraps almost all the way around town, and Ohio University. If you're looking for it on a map, it is southeast of Columbus. Again, here's the disclaimer. Ohio has horrible winters, just like any place else in this part of the country. Now, when I say horrible winters, I'm talking to people that are maybe from the desert states, California, Things like that. I'm sure if you come down to Ohio from Maine, you're all, oh, this is kind of nice. One of the best things about Athens, Ohio is the cost of living. It's pretty low. So it's definitely a budget-friendly option for retirees. Here's the stats. The cost of living in Athens, Ohio is 9% lower than the national average. Their healthcare costs are 12% lower. And the average life expectancy here is 76.8 years. Number six, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Again, cold, but beautiful. And if you don't like people and you kind of want to be in a small town, which is at the same time a city, there are some places like that in this country that do that. They're a city, they've got, you know, 20, 40, 60,000 people, but it really feels like a small town. Cheyenne is one of those. Cheyenne has 65,000 residents. That was in 2020. And I think they've dropped a little bit. They've had a touch of a slowdown after about 60 years of growth. Not much of one. In 2022, they lost 0.8% of their population. That's not terrible. If it continues three or four years like that, it's called a trend and people start looking into it. Even though they're shedding people, their real estate prices are still going up a little bit. Over the last year, they've almost grown 1%, while most of the country is dropping like five and 6%. If you're thinking about moving there, definitely talk to a realtor before you make any hard plans. But if you want to live that Western style life, Cheyenne's a good option. And of all the demographics moving there, it's retirees. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Cheyenne is 2% lower than the national average. Not bad. Their health care is 8% lower than the national average. And their average life expectancy is 76.8 years. Number five, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Coeur d'Alene has been very popular. Much like Prescott, a lot of retired cops are moving there. Coeur d'Alene is a lake town. It sits on Lake Coeur d'Alene. It's where the Spokane River empties into it. The city itself has a population of about 54,000 residents and the entire metro area is only about 170,000. So it's really not that big of a place. I had thought people had kind of lost interest in it. I'd heard about it all the time. Everyone was moving to Coeur d'Alene back like five, six years ago then everyone quit talking about it. I looked at the statistics and now they're still growing at a fast pace. If you want to retire in the Pacific Northwest, this is probably one of your best options. And yes, Idaho is part of the Pacific Northwest, even though it's not on the Pacific. Coeur d'Alene is a popular place to move. So there's a couple things here that surprised me. Number one, it's 
cost of living isn't terrible, and their real estate isn't terrible. Here's the stats. The cost of living in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is 2% above the national average. Like I said, for a popular place, they're doing pretty good. We haven't been really talking about it much here, but their real estate prices, only 5% higher than the national average. That's not bad. That's probably going to change at the end of next quarter because they're still growing while the rest of the country is, you know, most of the country, I should say, is still dropping in real estate price. I would say by the end of the year, they're going to end up being about 10% higher than the national average. Their healthcare is only 2% above the national average and their life expectancy is 78.4 years. What really gets them on this list is life expectancy, tons of things to do, and it's a beautiful city. Number four, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sioux Falls is right where South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa meet. And it's a great place for retirees. Plenty of golf, affordable, great hospitals, friendly people, nice parks, great museums, and a bustling downtown area. I rarely use the word bustling, but I think it's appropriate here. Let's all say it together, bustling. I don't know, I feel awkward saying that. Any words you feel awkward saying? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're gonna move to the Dakotas, I would suggest South Dakota. They both get some pretty harsh winters, but North Dakota, a little extra harsh up there. I read a book one time about, I don't know, just people moving west in the early days. I forget the term the guy used, but he said North Dakota gets so cold, only chubby people survive. It was something to that effect. I thought it was pretty funny. All right, here's the numbers. The cost of living in Sioux Falls, South Dakota is 11% lower than the national average. Not bad. Their healthcare is 4% lower, and the life expectancy here is 76.9 years on average. Number three, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I've mentioned it before, but of all the desert-ish type states, if I was gonna move to one, it would be Santa Fe, New Mexico. I like my rain, I like my trees, and I like wet soil, but there's just something about Santa Fe, New Mexico that's just amazing. I love that city. Santa Fe is a pretty good sized city with a population of 87,000 residents with the entire metro area having about 154,000. If you wanna to move to a city and not really have to worry about gardening, Santa Fe might be the place for you. Nobody has a lawn here. They have small trees and scrub brush. You have to trim those back every once in a while, but you know, that's like once a year, once every other year if you're lazy, but definitely no mow in the yard. Here's the stats. The cost of living in Santa Fe, New Mexico is 3% higher than the national average. It's a nice place to live, so it's going to be a little more expensive than the average, but 3% is not bad. You get a little bit of a break on healthcare, that's 4% lower than the national average, and the life expectancy here is 74.5 years. Number two, Columbia, Missouri. Yes, put your teeth back in your mouth. I said Columbia, Missouri. They have great healthcare here and it is extremely affordable. This is great for retirees on a budget. And home prices are pretty affordable too. In second quarter 2023, the median home price in Columbia was 271,000. Now they are climbing, but they're still pretty low. The median home price in the United States is like 420,000 right now. I've seen different numbers, but it's somewhere between 420 and 4 450. If you're looking for Columbia on a map, it is right between Kansas City and St. Louis with the Missouri River flowing west of town. I had dinner on an Amtrak train with a couple from Columbia. They spoke very highly of the town. They said it's got a little bit of crime, but they loved it. That was the same trip. I, it was weirdest thing. So we're crossing the Mississippi River and for some reason the train got stuck on the bridge that goes across Mississippi River. So I'm in my little room on the train and I look out the window and right below me, a couple feet, there's a little shack that has, you know, it's attached to the bridge. I'm sure it has something to do with the operation of the bridge. Anyway, the door opens while I'm looking at it and a little person comes out. Like, you know, a little man. We lock eyes. He flips me off and goes back in the hut. Is that why he came out of the hut? To flip me off? <laughs> if you've never had that happen to you, I mean, it's life changing. I was really bummed that the train window doesn't go down because I had some really good jokes about living under a bridge for him, but yeah, I couldn't yell him. He wouldn't have heard me and the people in the room next to me would have thought I was insane. Yelling at a closed window. All right, let's Let's get to the stats. The cost of living in Columbia, Missouri is 5% lower than the national average. Their health care, 2% lower, and their life expectancy, 75.2 years. All right, before we get to number one, if you are interested in moving to any one of these cities or any city in the United States, there's a link for home and money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with a real estate professional almost anywhere in the United States. All right, on to number one. 
And number one, Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa City is a charming college town with a vibrant cultural scene. There's another word I never use, vibrant. It's a college town, so you know they got a good beer scene too. This town kind of has this mix of historic charm, outdoor recreation, and obviously educational opportunities. So if you're retiring and you wanna go back and take some courses at the community college or the college, it's there for you. They have solid healthcare here with the University of Iowa hospitals, and then they got a bunch of clinics along with that. Not a bad place to live. Low crime rate, affordable, and a pretty good life expectancy. Here's the numbers. The cost of living in Iowa City, Iowa is 2% lower than the national average. Their healthcare is 9% lower. And their life expectancy is 77.5 years. But if you're looking to buy a home here, the median home price here is 280,000, and that's up 10% from last year. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.